下面有请来自苏西的软件工程师 Sasha Granat 和 Upbound 的软件工程师 Daniel Magum 的分享。他们的题演讲题目是介绍 Posi Kubernetes 的一个版本发布过程，成功是通过团队和工具。The next up is Sasha Granat, a software engineer from Susi, and Daniel Magum, a software engineer from Upbound. Their top topic is Intra. Autonomy of a Kubernetes release, success through team and tools. Please start your talk. Thank you. All right. Hello, folks. My name is Daniel Mangum. I'm presenting today with Sasha Grenert. Um, Sasha is a tech lead for SIG release, um, and I am the CI signal lead, uh, which we'll get into what that means later on, um, for the 1.19 Kubernetes release. Um, we're going to give a talk today um, about how we do Kubernetes releases. Um, this is, as you see, um, as you'll see on the slides in just a moment, um, this is part one of a talk, um, and we are going to be giving part two at Q KubeCon uh, EU, which is also virtual, um, in I guess just a few weeks after this airs. Um, so we're excited to kind of give a nice introduction to this and then go into some more depth. So we hope you tune in for that one um, as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here and we can get right into it. All right, so like I said, today we're talking about anatomy of a Kubernetes release success through team and tools. So a big part of releasing Kubernetes is a lot of folks that come together um, to have individual tasks that then roll up to this kind of um, big operation uh, that results in new Kubernetes releases being available for the community. Um, and we try to automate a lot of that through tools, um, but there's also a lot of individuals spread out all over the world um, who do a lot of work to make this happen. So to kind of give you an overview of what we're going to talk about today, um, we're going to first just look at how Kubernetes releases are made in general, just logistically. Um, then we'll provide an overview about the uh, SIG release special interest group, um, which uh, Sasha and I are both a part of. Um, and then we'll deep dive into the actual 1.19 release cycle. Um, I'm excited to talk about this today, and Sasha is going to give us a lot of detail on it um, because 1.19 is a little bit unique uh, because of the uh, global pandemic pandemic situation um, and how some of the timeline has to be adjusted and how that's affected subsequent releases and that sort of thing. Um, so I'm excited to uh, kind of go through how uh, the the group worked together to accommodate uh, this changing times uh, that we're living in right now. So this will be a, a especially unique cycle to look at. All right, so looking at just an overview of the Kubernetes release cycle, um, at the start of the release cycle, the first thing you have to do is, is build the release team. So um, as we'll get into a moment, uh, one of the, I think, most thriving parts of the Kubernetes community is the SIG release shadow program. So essentially there are different teams as part of uh, SIG release, uh, and they all do different things to make a release happen. And there's an application process for you to become a shadow of a given team. So each team has a lead and then there's usually three or four shadows. Um, so at the beginning, uh, the first thing you want to do is establish the leads, which are typically shadows or, or previous leads from uh, previous releases. Um, and then you'll look through the applications for all of the um, shadow applicants and select them for the different teams. Um, after that, you need to uh, go ahead and set the schedule for the release. So um, as, as Sasha is going to get into later, there's different deadlines for different parts of the release, and those need to be set so that people who are actually implementing features um, into Kubernetes know when they have to have that implemented and merged um, or have that reviewed. Um, and then after that, you go ahead and start tracking the things that have to be done by each of those deadlines. Um, and that's where the SIG release team definitely comes into play quite a bit. Um, and then throughout the cycle, um, we have continuous updates uh, starting on a weekly basis and then getting into more granular. Um, and then there's also intermediate releases, so alpha, beta, and RC releases. Um, that's done by the release engineering subgroup, another group that Sasha and I are both a part of, um, and he's going to talk about that uh, a little bit more. All right, so looking at some of those deadlines that I mentioned, uh, the first thing is enhancements freeze. So if you're not familiar with how uh, new features get added to Kubernetes, uh, you have to create a KEP, um, so a Kubernetes enhancement proposal. Um, so basically this is just a write-up, um, you know, in Markdown and in a GitHub repository. 
and that has to be approved by folks in the SIG that that's related to. Um, so for instance, um, this cycle outside of our SIG release duties, um, Sasha and I worked on implementing uh, SetComp GA, um, so moving some of the SetComp functionality to a general availability. It was currently being used with Alpha Fields. So um, one of our, our um, coworkers on that, uh, Paolo, um, actually wrote up a cap or modified an existing cap uh, to show how we we're going to implement that. And then that had to be accepted before we went about actually doing the implementation. Um, burn down is when we move from those uh, weekly release meetings where each of the teams are giving updates to having more granular release meetings. So that typically looks like three times a week um, and then eventually right up close to the uh, release time uh, potentially every day. Um, and those, that's just where um, leads and shadows from the different teams within SIG release will give updates uh, on their status, um, which help inform how we're moving towards a release. Um, next after that is the docs deadline. So you have to imagine for new features, we have to document them, um, at least most of them, especially if they're user facing. And for the docs deadline, uh, the docs team, um, which is one of the uh, SIG release kind of sub teams, um, make sure that all of the PRs for docs are in place and that they can be reviewed um, so that they can quickly be merged uh, later on. Um, code freeze is probably the biggest thing that you've heard about if you follow any Kubernetes folks on Twitter um, or anything like that. So code freeze is exactly what it sounds like. You can't uh, merge any more code um, into the release branch. Um, so you have to have code complete, you have to have your PRs open, um, they have to be approved um, and then merged. Um, this, this cycle in particular, we had some issues with CI. Um, so we always work around that to make sure that things that are complete are able to be included in the release. Um, but generally you have to have things merged uh, by that date. Um, cherry pick deadline uh, basically means that no more changes can go into the release branch. So you can imagine after code freeze, um, cherry picks have to happen from um, the main branch onto the release branch. Um, but we also have a deadline for, for when that can be done. And those are usually for fixing critical bugs or fixing a test that's failing or something like that. And then finally, we culminate in release day. Um, so this is exactly what it sounds like. Um, it's just the day that we make the release and there's a, a lot of celebration for all the hard work that folks have done. I want to mention here at the bottom, we have some links um, to the SIG release repo. Uh, SIG release is where you have handbooks for each of the roles that folks play in the release, uh, as well as the calendar for um, all previous and current releases. Um, so that's definitely very helpful for folks that are looking to get a little more um, in depth of a look than we could give uh, in a talk of this length. All right, so we talked about these different teams um, for SIG release, and I'll briefly give an overview of each of them. Uh, some of them I have more context um, on than others, but we'll start off with the team lead. So uh, the team lead kind of uh, oversees all of the release. So uh, they're running the release team meetings and they're getting the updates and making sure everything is happen happening as appropriate. Um, they also do any coordination between the different teams. Um, they can be especially um, helpful because they usually have quite a lot of experience in the Kubernetes community. Um, they can be especially helpful if as a team lead or as a shadow, uh, you need them to kind of elevate a, a request for something to happen that you need to be done to meet your deadlines. Um, they can be really helpful in that regard. Um, this this uh, release cycle for 1.19, uh, Taylor Dolezal is our uh, release lead um, and he's done an excellent job and you'll see a release coming out in August uh, because of the, the work that he's done in leading these teams. Uh, the Emeritus Advisor uh, is typically someone who was a release team lead in a previous release. Um, so this, this release, it's Tim Pepper, um, and they really just help their release team lead whenever they have questions about the way things should work, um, or just kind of help shoulder some of the burden if there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, so they can be especially helpful, and they're usually someone who is very, very familiar uh, with the Kubernetes community. Release engineering uh, is a little bit different than all the other teams uh, because it's its own sub project. So as I mentioned, uh, Sasha and I both work on release engineering. So these are the actual tools um, like the command line interface, which is called Corel, um, that allows us to actually do the operations to physically make the release. Um, so that includes, you know, pushing new builds, um, generating release notes, all things like that. 
Um, so that's kind of the engineering side of producing a release. Um, there's some really interesting stuff that happens there. Uh, there's always plenty of work around that tooling uh, for folks that are looking to get involved. And that um, actually has a cycle in terms of membership outside of just a release cycle. So typically, if you're part of release engineering, um, you're part of that sub project for multiple cycles. Uh, it's not really the typical shadow program. All right, looking at bug triage, CI signal, and the rest, um, these are all critical teams for making sure different parts of the release are in place. You can kind of guess by their name uh, what they do. Uh, each of these teams typically has three to four shadows um, and then a lead who is usually a shadow before. So just to give you some context on my involvement, um, this release cycle for 1.19, I am the CI signal lead. Um, for the past two releases, 1.17 and 1.18, I was a shadow on that team. So it really uh, is is a good process for helping you to build up um, kind of acumen in your given area um, and then you're able to move into a leadership role and share that same mentorship with folks that are following behind you um, but just to give a quick overview of each of these teams uh, bug triage is going to help make sure that any bugs that are raised as issues um, get addressed by the uh, appropriate SIGs in a timely fashion CI signal is going to look at dashboards and tests um, and make sure that everything is passing that is critical for a release and if it's not um, they're going to make sure to find out whether it's a flaky test, um, a bug that needs to be corrected, um, or whatever's happening to make sure that we're confident in the quality of the release we're putting out there. Um, communications, they kind of handle all of the communication between the different teams as well um, as the CNCF and other uh, community stakeholders. Docs, they're really important for um, that docs freeze that we were talking about. So um, there's folks on the doc side that supplement the technical review with kind of uh, grammatical review and content review and that sort of thing. Um, and I know from implementing a docs PR that this cycle that they are extremely helpful um, as an engineer. Um, a lot of these folks um, are really, really talented in how they write documentation um, and they can help guide folks that are uh, documenting the KEPs that they've um, put into place. Speaking of KEPs, uh, next is enhancements. So these are folks that are tracking um, new functionality that's being added to Kubernetes for this cycle um, and making sure those are implemented in a timely fashion and if not they'll get bumped to the next release and then finishing up is release notes um, it's been cool to see release notes working especially with release engineering rate lately um, to be able to generate um, some of the notes that are produced so this is basically just telling uh, consumers of kubernetes what new things are available um, in a new release and that includes the alpha beta rc releases etc um, so folks can know exactly what they're getting uh, what may be added what may be be removed um, in a release. All right, and lastly, just talking about the SIG release shadowing program here, I've already mentioned it quite a bit, um, but I just want to encourage anyone watching this talk who wants to get involved in this process. Um, I think you would be challenged to find an open source community um, that better fosters growth um, than Kubernetes specifically in the SIG release shadowing program. And I'm speaking from my own personal experience there. Um, joining the shadowing program two cycles ago, um, there have been countless people who have been invested um, in my growth um, and also um, have expected me to contribute a lot back in return. Um, so I am just really part, proud to be part of this program um, and I'm also proud to be helping new folks um, coming into it. Um, so please feel free to jump in the Slack channel, uh, get on the mailing list, apply for a shadow position in a new release, um, or feel free to reach out to me or Sasha directly um, if you'd like to get involved. All right, so Sasha is now going to take it up and get into a little more of the technical part of the release cycle, specifically for uh, 1.19. Thank you, Len. It was pretty great so far. All right, you should see my screen right now. Is, is that correct? Just one question. Yeah. All right, so let's dive into the Kubernetes 1.19 release cycle. So now we got more or less a good overview about the theory, how it should look like, or what the different parts of the release was. Uh, and I was a little bit confused as I started to contributing to the release from the beginning of 2019, I think so. Um, but in general, it's pretty, pretty good formalized. And now the first thing we have to do, we are on Monday, April 13, we have to assemble the release team at all. And for example, for 1.19, there was the emeritus advisor Lucky, and he just proposed that we now have to assemble a Kubernetes 1.19 release team. And Roche was the release lead for 1.18. 
Awards, and he nominated for 119 Taylor. And yeah, that's the, more or less the official process. There's also a release team selection process available right here, which yeah, contains a lot of information about timings, membership, also the selection criteria, criteria about shadows and the release team lead and stuff like that. I don't want to go to, through all of this right now, but it's pretty good, well written down. And I think it follows on a good good example how the community works and how communities should work in that area, right, in general. So yeah, so now we have Taylor as new release team lead and then he can take over and just select or more or less um, every previous team lead or for example, um, Jeremy nominated, um, Nabrun for enhancements lead 419 and this goes through more or less every section of the whole team and if we have the different leads then the leads can start to assemble their own part of the of the team by filling that up with the shadow applications so the shadow application is not nothing really special at all it's just more or less a google form and then the different lead will reach out to you and will talk to you about if you're interested in the role what could you ex what do you expect from the role or what could you expect from the overall yeah overall topic all right, so the next thing we have to do, um, the CI signal master blocking tests have to be ready. Daniel will talk uh, in a few minutes about this too. I just want to show you how a CI signal, uh, how it looks like. Um, it's green is in general pretty good. Red is not so good because it's failing. Um, and Daniel will give you a, short, in a, in a couple of minutes a good overview about how we can actually interpret those data, what we have to do if tests are failing, and yeah, what the work of CI signal is in general. The next thing we have to do, we have to start tracking the enhancements. Yeah, for tracking enhancements, we have an enhancements tracking sheet, which looks like this for 119. And here we can see that we are pretty green, which is good. This was not always the case. Um, for example, we spoke a little bit about Zeccom GA, and we should find Zeccom is, uh, it's not, not part of this sheet anymore. I can't find it right now. But in general, you can you can see that the enhancements, every enhancement for the recycle will be tracked. And we have to ensure that it also has documentation and that the timelines for the doc status is right, right in time. And that's the, a pretty good overview if you want to get to know what is coming up in the next release and what is new at all. So then, this was the first week. There was a lot of work to do already. And if we jump into the next weeks, then we will see that release engineering will uh, cut some releases. So in our case, these are the first the Alpha 2 and the Alpha 3 releases. Alpha 1 has been cut directly after 1.18, so it's not that time critical for the release at all. This is more or less an automated, automated way to prepare for the next release. The release notes draft will be generated based on those alpha releases. So we will have some continuously updates of the release notes draft and the release notes team can all also start working on those parts. Then we will do weekly release team meetings, which provide um, status updates about all different roles. This looks like, for example, we have a um, Google Docs document where we uh, document all those all those status updates and if we look a little bit down and we can see yeah we had one last friday and every meeting will be recorded for sure and for example then we can see that enhancements is already green so we give a little status indicator if a cha if a team is green red or yellow and for ci signal for example we are currently red so we have some failing tests, I think so. And if you want to know more about those ongoing reports, then you can just look into the very, very detailed descriptions of the status updates, which is pretty nice. Generally, um, it's, there's also always some open room on those release team meetings, but we try to keep them as formal as possible to keep the focus um, on directly on the release, especially in the last weeks of the release cycle. Now we are already in week six. Week six means that we have enhancements freeze. So mm -hmm. all enhancements which want to be included in the current release must have a Kubernetes enhancement proposal 
in an implementable state. This also includes test plans and graduation criteria, so this can take up some time if a, an enhancement proposal should be really be implemented in the release, then I just can recommend to uh, bring it into an implementable state in the release before. Otherwise, it would be really, really stressful from my perspective. So then we need, yeah, we also need an open issue in the release milestone. Basically, every pull request and issue in a milestone is usually targeting for that release, and it's fine to go into the into the actual release. So if an enhancement does not really uh, really meet those requirements, then it will be removed from the milestone and we have to require an exception. This is pretty, pretty interesting because um, such an exception would be something like this. So just an email to the mailing list would be enough and we just can uh, raise an enhancement request, exception request. So just we have to fill out some enhancement status, some special interest groups which is involved, and then we can kindly ask for, an, for a request. And yeah, if it, in some cases, this is already pretty, pretty easily possible to, to work on, on some such a request. All right, so then we cut beta zero. Beta zero is still on the master branch. This is new for 119. Usually we would create a release branch, but uh, since we just changed the release cycle to be a bit more longer than expected, we just decided to leave it on the master branch and then go for the release candidate, which will create the release branch. But this will be later on. From week eight on, we start our burn down phase. So this means that we have an increased cadence of the release team meetings and we begin to track the work more closely. So we have to report in a more continuous way and that we just have a higher focus on our bug fixes, that we, um, that we can eliminate test flakes and generally stabilize the release. We also have to ensure that the docs and the release notes are written and, and accurate. And we also have to identify all enhancements which go into the release. So we have to bring them into the enhancements repository. Then we have to provide, a, yeah, we collect it basically as release metrics and everything which is release relevant will be tracked more closely during the overall burn down phase. So in the later weeks, we continue our burn down phase. We are now in week eight to 10. You can already see that the release cycle has a little bit stretched over the whole, over the whole weeks. Usually we would just have around about three months. Now we have uh, four, four to five months for the overall release. And the release team lead will also give a call for exceptions for enhancements and the release engineering team will later on cut beta one and beta two so this is a continuously continuous process to track that the release is really in a good shape then we have a docs deadline and um, at least we need a placeholder pr for the documentation for the enhancements and um, otherwise it would be really really hard to bring those docs into the uh, into the release and this can also lead into yeah that maybe maybe we have to drop an enhancement because the docs are not ready. So this is a, a really, really hard feature gate on that point. So then we have code freeze, July the 9th. So this is not that far away. And um, all enhancements um, have to be code complete, including all tests and also the docs PR has to be in open state. This can be really tough, especially if we have to merge a lot of PRs and the code freeze days and yeah kubernetes is, is a really really fast evolving project and it can be really really hard to bring in your uh, your code change right before code freeze yeah the docs pr it just has to be ready to be merged um, but it has to be a clear topic and it should be clear who is responsible for what at that point after then, only release blocking issues and PRs will be allowed to put into the milestone. This means that we still, so, so for example, if we cut 119RC1, then we will create a release branch, but this does not really mean that it's not possible to bring new and or bring future enhancements into the master branch. We will sync up the release branch and the, and the master branch on a continuously basis. And um, yeah, until we reached code thaw, but we will come later to that. So then 
In week 14 to week 16, the release branch management will create that RC2, which is code for in our in our case. So then it, it's not possible to actually merge something into the or well, submerge something into the release branch indirectly via the master branch. We don't sync them up anymore, but you are able to actually yeah, cherry pick your changes into the release into the release branch. Yeah, that would be possible. Um, generally, the docs also have to be completed and merged. Otherwise, yeah, we would run into time problems. And in weeks 17 to 20, we start our daily burn down. So then we will give a daily update about the release, what is going on, and what is the current status about it. So the cherry pick deadline and test freeze is also is August the 6th in the time. So this is in the future now. And we do a small break for KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe, which is pretty fine. Um, we mostly always do this. And branch management will release 119 on August 27. Yeah, so <laughs> this is that's it mo mostly. This is a pretty pretty nice release cycle, pretty long this time. And the release retrospective will always happen after after a release, and this in, ensures a continuous evolvement process. So cool. I think that's it from the presentation perspective, but I would like to open up this stage for Daniel again to give us an update about CI Signal. Awesome. Thanks, Sasha. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen. I'm just going to give you all a quick rundown of what it might look like uh, kind of a day in the life of someone on the CI Signal team. Um, so I will go ahead and share here. Um, so uh, Sasha actually alluded to this earlier, um, but what you're looking at here is test grid. So that's testgrid.cates.io. Um, you can see um, kind of these different categories of dashboards here. We're particularly interested in SIG release, and you'll see that we have blocking and informing jobs for each branch. So um, for most of the release, the critical uh, dashboard we're looking at is SIG release master blocking. Um, and then later on, you'll see we're later in the 1.19 re release cycle. So we now have 1.19 blocking jobs specifically. Um, for a while, those will pretty closely mirror the master blocking jobs. Um, but blocking jobs basically say, okay, you can't release if this is pass if this is not passing. Um, and informing jobs are more like this is giving us just an indication of general health. Um, so I want to show you all quickly, um, actually, a, a, um, a job that I was investigating over the weekend. So we don't want to ever have any red jobs on the master blocking dashboard. And you'll see we actually have two right now. So I was looking specifically into this GCE device plugin GPU master um, job. So the first thing you'll typically do um, is go ahead and open an issue um, and describe what's happening and kind of give some information. Um, and you can tag the relevant SIG to say, hey, um, it looks like you're responsible for this job or test. Um, can you please take a look at it? Um, in this case, a single test uh, appears to be causing um, this entire job to fail. Um, so you'll see I got some feedback from some folks um, uh, who are um, knowledgeable of this area. Um, specifically um, from uh, this feedback here, I was able to tell that uh, we're having an issue with the image that was being used. So tests can fail for a lot of different reasons. Um, importantly, um, let me move this out of the way, importantly, um, we have the configuration of jobs, which are a set of tests to be run. So that's what you're seeing here, all of these different jobs. Um, and these are runs of a job. And those would be in the test info repo. Um, so specifically in config jobs, this is where you'll find configuration um, that basically says, you know, run this on a periodic basis or run this on every pull request um, or something like that. Um, and this is all handled by Prowl, which is a separate system that you'll probably um, be able to find some information about in, in some of the SIG testing tops talks. Um, and then the actual tests that are being run, of course, uh, live with the code that's being tested. So they are typically in the uh, test directory of the Kubernetes Kubernetes repo. Um, and specifically, a lot of them are going to fall in the end to end category. Um, so here we're looking uh, specifically at uh, GC device plugin GPU master. And a nice thing that test grid does is it can show you the changes. So if we go back a bit, we want to see when this started failing. And you can see that the infra commit did not change. So we're thinking that's probably not uh, what caused it, but the Kubernetes Kubernetes commit did change. So the first thing I would think to do is look at, at the diff between those two commits and see if anything happened. And often that will tell you um, why it is failing. So you'll see here that I actually mentioned that here. There's only one commit between the two. 
Um, and I looked at what changed here. And actually, all of these changes don't appear to affect those tests. Um, so it's confusing to see uh, generally, usually when there is a change uh, and then a test is failing that it affected that. In this case, uh, that was not the case. Um, and you'll actually see through some of the communication with SIG scheduling folks, um, we determined that in a separate repo, um, there is a daemon set config um, that we actually reference in one of our tests here. Um, and you'll see uh, we're looking at the Google Cloud Platform Container Engine Accelerators repo. Um, and we actually download this in the test on every time. So there's lots of different ways that tests can be implemented in Kubernetes. This one is a little bit strange, um, particularly this is a remote repo that then references the latest image um, that is built in a different repo. Um, so you can see there's lots of different ways that tests can fail here. Um, so this is using latest, so it's always pulling the latest. So if there's an image that, that becomes incompatible, um, then we're gonna have issues, right? Um, and this, this daemon set particularly is for installing uh, NVIDIA GPUs um, on, on uh, GCP, GCE instances. Um, so we noticed that um, that's what was happening and it was timing out. So those NVIDIA um, drivers were not being installed. So um, specifically in this case, um, the fix that I proposed um, is to stop actually using um, that remote uh, repo by default um, where we don't actually maintain that manifest. Um, so you'll see the change here. Um, before we were um, using a... Um, this URL that I mentioned there, um, by default, um, you had to override if you want to use something else. So my proposal here was to instead use a local manifest that we can control and can pin to a specific version. Um, so you'll see here that we found a version that worked um, and we also updated some other components of it. Um, and so now by default, it's going to use this local one, but we can still override it to use a, a remote one as well. Um, so that actually, as you can see um, by the passing on the PR, is going to um, fix the um, the test that was failing. So if we look, we'll actually see that there's a, uh, a per pull request job here that also runs that mirrors this one that's failing. So we're able to see that that passes. Um, so that's an example of an investigation. So um, in that case, it was an issue with the test, not with an actual code change, um, but sometimes it's a code change and then you may have a bug that needs to be addressed as well. Sometimes CI signal will address those, like in this case, um, in other cases, we'll, we'll ask the SIG, you know, you have more context here, please address that. Um, so if you're interested in CI signal, that's what it can look like. Uh, it's a lot of just um, tracking down um, different things that are failing and reporting on it. Um, so it can be a little bit monotonous, but overall, um, it's, a, it's a very rewarding uh, place to be because you get to see um, the overall health of a release um, and contribute to, to making a release healthier. So with that, um, I think we want to go ahead and wrap up here. Uh, it's been a pleasure to um, chat with you all today, and uh, we're looking forward to our kind of SQL talk at KubeCon EU, so please make sure to tune in um, to that. And also, please feel free to reach out to me or Sasha directly um, if you have any questions or thoughts um, or feedback. So thank you, Daniel and Sasha, for the great talk. Now let's move on to the QA session. Uh, 感谢您的演讲, QA Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Sasha from Google Cloud Platform Container Engine Accelerator. So, um, Sasha or Daniel, uh, the question goes like, so when would you decide wait, uh, you know, when to open the doc PR for, for a major feature? Yeah, I can take that one, I guess. Um, Sasha and I actually worked on a, a new feature for this PR that I mentioned in the talk, um, and I handled um, the docs for that. Um, I would say, uh, the earlier, the better, honestly. Um, there are a couple of different phases of a docs PR review. So um, first of all, there's kind of like the, the technical review. So uh, in our case, um, Sasha and I were working with one other individual. So I opened the docs PR and they were the main technical reviewers. Um, and then on the documentation side, um, the docs team had some folks that reviewed it 
um, for, you know, the writing style and um, how a tutorial was written and that sort of thing. Um, and that can sometimes take some time to um, go through and for them just have time to get stuff. So I definitely say, you know, as early as you can get the docs PR in, that's great. Uh, generally, um, that can sometimes be difficult to get in before you actually have the tech technical implementation, especially if you're showing a tutorial of using it. Um, but, but mostly, yeah, the best policy is as early in the cycle as you can uh, to go ahead and get that PR open, get early feedback um, and iterate on that if necessary. Yeah, thank you. So as long as possible. Yeah, so the, the next question is still regarding the docs. Um, you know, uh, in, one, in each release, we will have uh, different de deliverables, such as, you know, you mentioned the release and then docs generally and then tutorial. Uh, who is the decision maker in which type of delivery to be included in a certain release? I'll let you take that one, Sasha. Um, it's, it's not easy. So there are multiple, multiple participants involved, right? So for example, um, yeah, if we speak about I mean, yeah, I mean, we have dedicated teams. For example, we can still um, re refer some work to, to, to SIG docs in general. So they will really, really help us in reviewing and also bringing, bringing the stuff together. But then we have a dedicated docs team in SIG release as well, who will also yeah, have to ensure that everything works in the end. So all in all, people have to communicate. I think that's the, the basic key. And yeah, then we have to see that we can get all the documentation and all the stuff and all the necessary bits for the release right in time into the, yeah, into the branches. Thank you. Okay, so any questions from the audience? If you have, please freeze them in the QE column and um, Sasha and Daniel will answer your questions there. It's, I, I think it's really uh, difficult to you know, manage and um, release, especially when it ran different SIGs and different teams. It's, it's really a teamwork to, you know, to get it down and it requires a lot of handy tools so that you can see uh, what's the blogger and uh, something red in that page and um, you need to take care of that. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot of teamwork for sure. <laughs> so what's the best tools that you would recommend for other, you know, open source projects? I mean, we mainly stick to GitHub. Um, we were, so from a tooling perspective, we tried out different other tools as well. And Kubernetes provides yeah, some sort of own tool tools like the CI signal dashboards and stuff like that. But generally we, we try to stick to good communication on GitHub issues. And yeah, for immediate or urgent communication, we usually stick to Slack, which pr works pretty well. Yeah. Thanks. So yes, it seems no more questions uh, from the audience. Um, then let's conclude this session and uh, we would look forward to your next session in Kubicon uh, Europe. So thank you. Thank you for a great time. Uh, so, 那好,